Sheila Thank you, Sheila. Good morning, Zoomers. How are you? And good morning, all of you who are here today. Welcome. Welcome to any new people. Okay, well, Spirit Life Action. Hmm. I did wonder what, whether this title should be Life Spirit Action, but no matter, that's splitting hairs. <laughs> I'll begin with a precy of statements from Unity Writings. The source of life is spiritual energy. We cannot get life from the outer personality or from anything external. We must touch the inner current. This is deeper and finer than electricity or human magnetism. And we can turn it on by making mental contact with it by means of thoughts, feelings, and words. We think, move, and have our being in life. Life is always present and available in its fullness, even though we may not be demonstrating it fully right now. Well, anything concerned with this enormous mystery and non-dimensionality that is covered by such terms as life and spirit is so immense and humbling that it's bound to challenge. It is our personal consciousness of ideas, thinking and feeling that brings these two conditions into the realm of spiritual action, especially in the body, if we keep the consciousness of life as mind and spirit. And in the phenomenal world, life is the energy that propels all forms into action. This is a lot here that is basic to our very existence that we do not even yet properly grasp, even after 2,000 years. But today I want to talk more broadly about our overriding perspective of what encompasses these three energies. Overall, it seems as time goes by, we humans discover there is more and more to learn about this invisible force and its numerous outer and inner manifestations within the known and unknown universes. Yes, we are now told there is more than one. We have not yet explored all there is. More than ever before, the possibilities seem to expand way beyond any previously imagined horizons. Now most of this does not concern us personally right now, or even at all, but just a glimpse, vastness, so far beyond our scope that we cannot take it in, can be so stressful that it stops thought. The scale of what we know and are yet to know about the outer world and the inner world can seem way too much, particularly if we have no spiritual reference point to help us balance our sense of identity and our place in the physical cosmos. I suggest that when we feel these moments of distress, even panic, we can learn to recognise this as a warning that we are losing touch with our spiritual center and the life current. At these times, we need to stop, to take time to balance inwardly and refocus on spiritual truth. We can look at reactions like overwhelm as an obvious invitation to go within, just as the daily word said today a signal to shut out the world around us and embark on the search for that deeper spiritual connection again, so we can find our centre of power where every faculty will begin to buzz with new life, as Charles Fillmore assures us. We do this in stillness and silence, remembering 
who we are as spiritual beings and connecting with the eternal realms of life and spirit. There we find the deep peace that has nothing to do with the outer world and renews our inspiration to move forward again with and in alignment with the flow of life. As we all venture into a far greater understanding of what it means to see ourselves as spiritual and divine beings, our experience dramatically changes. I know that calling ourselves divine beings makes some people feel very uncomfortable. But what we are really saying here is that we have come to accept that we do have access to a creative generative power. It lies within. This power comes through us from a much greater source, but it means that we are not merely puppets or powerless victims of material circumstances. Even if we do not yet know how to use all the power we have, because we have it, we have great worth and value in the broader scheme of things. Once we recognize that power is available to us, we can consciously take charge of it. The energy will flow towards acting on our intentions. And the reason we can confidently make this statement is because we have been given this inner power of choice. So we become people living with conscious awareness and if we choose to do so, we can develop our understanding and put the unchanging spiritual principles to good use in ways that will help us and thereby shape a better outer world. However, if ownership of spiritual power is a new realization to us, we may not be immediately able to accept it as a reality. It is a shocking thing to realise that how we choose to think and what we choose to do in action does matter in the overall scheme. It means we need to pause and consider all our actions and our thoughts carefully and take full responsibility in everything. And this is not something we can accept lightly but it is a part of our use of the life energy. Some people may not wish to recognize this responsibility. They are often cynical about the world and may not yet feel any spiritual connection. And changing deep beliefs of this kind requires time to adjust, perhaps a lifetime of materialistic thinking. If we have not taken time to learn what spiritual truth has to offer in terms of mental and physical health and happiness, we miss out on what has been given to us freely for our own benefit and use. The choice, however, is voluntary. Or is it? Is there actually something in life that connects us to spirit and allows for its input? constantly urging us towards claiming our spiritual identity, even when we might prefer to ignore this. I think so. Before I found my spiritual centre, I was angry with life for not providing me with a guidebook for living. I struggled, and then I beat myself up about my mistakes. I felt resentful because I thought life was betraying me and betraying us as human beings. And living seemed painful and not worth the kind of suffering many people endure. I wanted more. I felt instinctively there must be more. And I looked for what that missing piece might be. Just surviving, not thriving, is not an enjoyable way to live. We know how people are vulnerable in this state. They are a bit lost and likely to attach any, to any person 
cause or group that gives them a structure or a greater sense of worth. What they really want to find is value and purpose. Without self-worth, they can easily fall prey to unscrupulous people who know how to take advantage of their vulnerability. I am enormously grateful that I discovered that the missing guidebook of life as I, that I was seeking were actually the gifts of spirit and the mental powers and faculties inside me that I could learn to trust. Naturally, this changed my life and my way of living. What a revelation it was to know that life is always moving us forward and life cannot help responding to whatever we ask of it. I had unknowingly been giving it instruction from the very beginning with each feeling and thought, and life has no choice but to do what I seem to be asking of it. Excuse me. It is so clearly important that we each put in real effort to learn how this amazing connection we have with life and spirit energy works. We should know how really valuable our individual effort is, not only as we put into practice our discoveries on behalf of our own needs, but also how it serves all of humanity by causing the consciousness of the whole human race to expand. The universe, spirit, life, is endlessly patient with us, not caring how long we take to grow. There is simply no hurry about what happens in consciousness. Spirit's timing is not human timing. We can receive a flash of insight in an instant, or it may take many centuries to grasp a single point. We like to think that we can achieve everything within one lifetime, and we feel sad and frustrated and disappointed when we cannot. Life is the dynamic force that is ceaselessly acting to move things onwards. It's also patient, giving us yet another chance. It is constantly changing and refreshing what is already created, endlessly replacing and recreating what is already in being, and shaking things up to create new forms. We see this in the cycle of nature, birth and transformation. Just as we have come to understand that there is no great being sitting in judgment about what we do at the human level, we must also accept that our notions of urgency is simply not an issue for spiritual life. There is no hurry. The divine is eternal and outside chronological time. Divine ideas will manifest when we are able to develop the necessary understanding of spiritual process and not before. If we are not ready to accept the full consciousness of this, it won't happen. Transformation will come about in divine order. It cannot be forced into being. It can happen in a moment, but infinity is its friend. So we need to hold fast to our faith. By contrast, we want to fix everything right now. We look through the lens of the human lifespan and want to get on with it, particularly if we believe the problems must be solved by human means. The action of spirit could probably lead us to a more fulfilling and permanent solution, but if only it could be communicated and accepted on a mass scale. Still, we rely on outer physical action prompted by the need for quick fix in reaction to things we reject as intolerable. At best, we are imperfect in our judgment and inclined to be one-sided but whatever material decisions are made, they will need adjustment later on to keep up with new developments. It sometimes seems we will never get to the heart of problems caused by spiritual ignorance. 
the need for us to recognise the immense spiritual power we all hold as individuals is therefore of the utmost importance. This is Unity's message, and surely this is where the emphasis needs to be in order to change the character of the world. Right. And as Charles Fillmore says in Keep a True Lent, Lent, spiritual harmony in humankind depends largely on the right relations of inner and outer realms of consciousness. Expression is the law of life. Whatever is expressed becomes manifest a sobering reflection on accountability. Generally, people tend to think of life either as a strange, unconnected process we just happen to be caught up in, or, from the other point of view, we focus on what is relevant to human well-being and our personal desires as individuals. In unity, we are all immensely more important we know we are all immensely more important to the fabric of creation and the growth of human consciousness. How often do we remember that the spirit of creation is an ongoing enterprise? Impressions of the greatness and primal importance of life as an eternal activity has caught my attention quite dramatically at different times. The day my grandfather's funeral was my first experience of grief over a personal loss. He was the only grandparent I had ever known. And after the service, I stepped outside for a few moments and became aware of what a beautiful day it was. I felt a deep pang because I realized that this larger process of life just goes on as normal, whether we are here or not. Life is unaffected by our departure. Regardless of our sadness or joy, life goes on, which is both comforting and disturbing. And years ago, I had a boyfriend who was a PhD botanist. He delighted in showing me how strong the natural world was. When we walked past deserted houses or overgrown, abandoned building sites, he would chuckle with glee at the weeds and plants that grew there. He showed me how little it took for all our ingenious schemes to be completely obliterated by the force of life. This was a reassuring sign to him because he saw that no matter how we mess things up or interfere with nature, it will always win in the end. We might destroy ourselves, but life will survive and continue to do what it does in some form or other. The human mind may devise many plans, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will be established. This quotation comes from Proverbs and it caught my intention last month, or October actually, and brought me great relief. Let's admit, we humans get so much wrong when we operate from within the framework of our temporal ego needs and fear. We rely way too much on our own actions and reactions and judgments when we cannot even see the bigger picture. We usually take a one-sided approach and in acting to resist or prevent something we do not like, we often cause some other unintended unintended complication that needs to be addressed down the track. Even our best thought out solutions do not appear to be lasting or entirely successful. Even so, let us hold fast to our faith in our ability to connect with life and spirit to carry us through and beyond these difficulties. These indestructible energies continue to operate regardless of our mistakes. Let us take comfort from the realization that there is something much bigger going on here than we could possibly conceive. But somehow, each one of us is a vital part of its unfolding. 
Let's do our bit to assist what is true in divine mind. That proverb's quotation strongly reassures me that there is something inherent in the spirit of life that self-corrects. Recently, <laughs> I learned that the ball used in lawn bowls is in fact weighted to fall on one side, and though it may get bumped, it's never going to be knocked too far, of course, because it is designed to stabilize. While it may roll and wobble around for a bit, it will do what is needed to do and come back into balance. Sorry, it will do what it is intended to do and come back into balance. I think the spirit energy in life is strong and full of predetermined spiritual purpose in much the same way. It is weighted to succeed because it cannot be destroyed. I confess that I find comfort in this larger, more long-term view that the purpose of the Lord will be established. The reason being that its purpose is already realized in spirit and divine mind. This is the spiritual truth of divine order. And when we lift mass human consciousness to the necessary level to catch up, it can manifest in an instant as our existential reality. I find this spiritual truth reassuring, and I hope you do too. In the meantime, give some thought to these two questions. What present hopes and dreams do you want to give life to? And then consider what you might think, say and do to give them the animating, the animating power of life they need. And remember that every thought we think is an immediate chemical reaction in the body, according to the late scientist and microbiologist, Dr. Candice Hoyt. Happy Christmas, everyone, and a prosperous new year. Who's that? Oh, hello, everybody, and bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Just who, having a who's, who's who, Sheila? Who's who? Who? Which one are you talking about? Oh, I'm not talking about any one in particular. All of them. <laughs> Just saying hello. <laughs> Tanya? Was it Tanya? There's no, no, no. a couple of new ones. There's uh, well, she's not new. Sarah. Um, Martha. 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 Yes, hello, Martha. Martha. Martha's Martha, new. okay, she's... you're all there. Well, anyway, just showing off my Christmas tree uh, on the wall.